Okay, thanks everyone. This is just a really short uh, flash talk about a project that I worked on at the ETH Berlin Hackathon. This was six months ago, almost five months ago, and we've been working on this project ever since, and it has come along quite a bit, but still it hasn't really broken through, and this is kind of a moment where I want to take a step back and say maybe it's just a stupid idea, maybe I shouldn't do it. So this is a talk about why personal tokens is a bad idea. And I hope maybe together we can actually rescue it. So the way I got this idea was that there are more and more people out there who are actually launching their own tokens. And the first guy to maybe do this like pretty successfully was a Polish YouTuber. And he launched his own token with a classical ICO during the hype and he raised $2 million dollars without telling anyone what he was going to actually do in exchange for that token. He just launched it, told people that they can buy it, and he had enough followers to actually raise a substantial amount of money. So there's another um, artist that did something similar, but at least she told people what you can do with the token that she launched. She said, if someone gives me that token, which I call Bitcoin, uh, you can get a piece of my art in the future in exchange for that. So she launched that token, a lot of people bought it, and in the end she basically pre-sold a lot of her not yet created art. And it seemed like a really w successful way to fund artists. But there's also freelancers and experts, especially in the crypto scene, who are doing this more and more. So just recently there's a guy called Matt Vernon from the Australia, he calls himself Dab Boy on social media, and he said one token of Dap Boy tokens is worth one hour of my time. So you can always redeem that token by sending it to me and then I will do one hour of consulting work on your project. So all in all, it seemed like a few people were doing this, but still we're not sure if this is a good idea and if everyone should be doing this. But it, there is a pattern here. There are a lot of uh, creators and artists who say, I have a service that I offer to the market and I'm going to launch a token and link that token with the service, and then people can invest in my future creations. So the project that I was working on was basically trying to make this possible and easy for everyone because those people that are now launching their own tokens, they have to have a lot of knowledge. They are already experts uh, and need to know how to uh, write a Solidity contract. Uh, otherwise, or, or maybe they're using like standard contracts, but still it's pretty hard for a designer or an artist who has not been in touch with the technology side of blockchain to launch their own token. So we got a lot of support, but also a lot of uh, backslash for this idea. And I want to just go through three of the big critiques that we got. And most people start off saying, hey, this is a really stupid idea. Why not just have someone pay me in regular currency? I, I don't want to have like millions of currencies in the world to pay for each and every service. That's why we have money. But the cool thing with the token, and that's the reply here, is that with the token, the service that you're offering doesn't have to be a real service right now. It can be an imagined a future service. It can be a service that doesn't exist yet. So if you just use normal money, you can always pay for all kinds of services. You can buy an art piece from an artist, but that art piece kind of has to exist already. And with the token, the artist can say, I make this token represent a future, not yet created painting of mine, and the artist can sell that. And if people believe that at some point the artist will actually create that painting that is backing the token, then the artist can raise money based on their future expected creations. This is a superpower kind of that individuals usually don't have. Usually people, individuals sell services that they just created, that they actually have in their hands. Uh, and you sell your time if you are in an employment, you sell your time to your employer right now. Companies on the other hand can actually sell future services. They have this ability to issue stock and thereby say, I'm going to do something in the future, guys, and uh, give me money now, and I will do that, and then you get a part in it. Now, this is something with a token an artist can do, or anyone actually could do. The other really big 
uh, outcry that comes when we talk about this idea is this is slavery. This is like selling your self to capitalist investors and they're going to exploit you. And so there are people who are really giving us strong uh, reactions. Crypto bro crowd is busy reinventing indentured servitude. Welcome to the future of human race. It's amazing how we can always make our actual universe worse than the worst dystopia we can think of. So <laughs> we're like, well, this is just a little hack. Why are you, why are you hating so strong on it? And, and I think a lot of, about it. Right? Is it slavery when you pre-sell your future services? Uh, again, when you sell your time to your employer, uh, you also don't sell just one hour, you, you sell like one year of your life or you, you sign a contract for three months. Is, is that slavery when you pre-commit to providing a certain service for a certain payment? I don't think so, but what I get is that there is a situation where someone could buy up all the tokens of a person. And let's say I'm selling my time and I say one token is worth one hour of my time. And it's super cheap in the beginning. So a lot of people buy my token and suddenly someone owns all of my time. That's a problem. Like, But in, on the other hand, I have uh, willingly chosen to offer my time and I've set the price of that token. So if you want to avoid this fact that someone buys up all your time and then tells you what to do with it, uh, well, you can just make that token really expensive or you can make it become more expensive as more people buy the token. So that's something that we are actually building into our solution. Uh, we're using a bonding curve instead of a classical ERC-20 token. So whenever someone buys your personal token, that token price goes up and in the end it will be very expensive to buy all of your time. So another last uh, possible attack vector that always gets pointed out is there's no way to actually hold you um, accountable to your promise. You just say, I'm offering a token and that's worth one hour of my time. But what if you just say, no, someone actually buys your token, they give it to you and you say, no, I'm not working anymore. I, sorry, that token is worthless. Yeah, that can happen. And I think one thread on Reddit uh, described pretty well what would happen. Like someone would just not get their service and then they would resell the token. They would sell the token because it's not worth anything and people would agree that it's not worth much so it would just kind of collapse. But then the big uh, very justified critique is but the person who has launched the token has already raised money with it. They've already collected the ICO fund if they've done the ICO with it and then it's too late, right? Because you already got scammed. That's very true. So that's also why we use bonding curves. In a bonding curve system, you don't get the money for a sold token, but rather the money stays in a smart contract and it stays in a, in a reserve. And in this way, you only get a tiny little fee whenever someone buys a token. You don't get the full price for the token. But that's something, that's something I don't want to put into this short 10-minute presentation. What I do want to say is that we have actually taken all these critiques and uh, responded to them and are building a live beta version that's coming out in two weeks from now. So I'd love to uh, hear from you guys if you're interested to launch your own token on that beta version. Uh, and if yes, please get in touch. We'll collect some emails in the end of this. Thank you. People have tried doing uh, similar kinds of things with... Um like for university students where, where companies can like invest in basically debt instruments that, that kind of take like a portion of someone's future income to repay it and stuff. These things always end up getting, you know, regulated as securities or, you know, have you talked to like a securities lawyer as a yeah. personal token, a security? In the case of student debt, usually it is regulated with contracts. So there it is really important for the student to actually pay the investor once he starts earning money. In our case, there are no contracts. There is no uh, legal system binding people to actually provide the service here. And so I think that makes a big difference because now this is just a way to say, I trust that you will actually give me a painting later on. There's no contract signed and there's no notary that was involved. So 
it's it's very much in a gray zone, but I think it's harder to classify it as a security than in the case of student debt. Yeah, I, I would think that by saying that some, you know, by saying that I'm going to provide you some service in the future, it's like a verbal contract, which, you know, yeah. is enforceable in a court of law. Um, so I, I, yeah. I don't think it's enforceable because let's say someone... Verbal contracts are enforceable. Yeah. But if you say, like I can say right now, I'm going to offer one hour of my time for this token and I'll, I can change my mind later on and not do it. Uh, who's going to enforce my my promise that I put on Reddit? The, the court. I don't. <laughs> I don't. I don't think that these kinds of promises on the internet are enforceable. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I would just consider talking to a lawyer before you get hit with securities. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks. Cool, Chris. Thank you, Akil. You obviously have a lot of passion for this idea. But it feels like you're kind of like struggling to take the next steps. But like, what, what, what's your plans for taking this forward? And actually, question yeah. two is: how, Where can I get Akhil coin? Yeah, so it's on the left uh, on the Rinkeby net right now. Achil's Creation is called, and it's on convergent.cx. But uh, I would like to take your email address and show you the mainnet version when we get live. Nice. And that's actually our next step because we realize it's really hard to test something like this on test nets when there's no real incentives, it's no real excitement, you know? And so we want to go live with a very, very minimal version on the mainnet where there can be very small money amounts involved, but it's already much more engaging. So in two weeks we're launching and this is our next step. I want to be there when you press the big red button on mainnet. <laughs> thank you, thank you. <laughs> well, anybody else got a question or a comment on this issue? Alex. 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 Okay, what do you think about speculation? Because other people can uh, make more money on your work than you actually do yourself. What is my advantage of a tradable token? Right. So, yeah, we think of it as a way for early supporters to also become part of your success. It should be part of the system that you can speculate because we want people who support you in an early stage when you need it most to be able to benefit from your success if you end up making it. So we want that to be part of it, but also we don't want it to be the primary objective. And so what we're doing is that we are building a fee into the system where when you sell the token, you have to pay a little bit of a fee to the artist. So selling is kind of discouraged and uh, people who buy in, they need to actually believe that you will succeed because then your token will be valuable enough to out way that fee okay but i thought uh the um the value i don't know ease or die is in some kind of escrow until it's redeemed yes so i don't get any money when someone invests in my token but he can earn money uh from selling the token I, and then I, actually so i'm mm. he's actually not investing in me until the token gets redeemed yeah there's a there's a nice little extension that i didn't talk about so it's very good that you're asking this question which is that the escrow has a special structure it has two curves for buying and for selling and the buying curve has a higher price so when you buy a token you need to put in more money than you get when you want to sell and the difference between this buy and the sell curve is what goes into the artist's pocket. So whenever someone buys a token, you do actually get some amount of money, but not all the money that was put in for the token. Most of the money that was put in for the token goes into that escrow, and then there is a spread between this buy and the sell that goes to the artist. Uh, what, what percent is that? Uh, we are thinking about 5%. Yeah. Okay. Cool, thanks a lot. Controversial idea, huh?